feels like something of a total contrast leading up to the launch of the next generation of AMD and Nvidia graphics cards that the prominent subject of conversation has not been about how much VRAM they're going to come with or what the performance is like. It has instead almost exclusively revolved around how much power they may potentially consume. And in this regard, the information to date hasn't been too positive. But simply, the vast majority of rumors and leaks have strongly indicated that the power consumption of the AMD 7000 and Nvidia 4000 series is, compared to the current generations, going to go up and quite notably too. But before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. Yep, face the camera, face the camera. Yep, that's that it. power supply, so dreamy. Oh my God, it's the Antec signature. With a fully modular design, 80 plus titanium efficiency rating and 10 year warranty, it will be the most famous power supply you've ever owned. Find out more by clicking the link in the description below. While it's still a hugely speculative factor as to what we will eventually see, following a new leak from the reliable source Copite7Kimi, it seems that fresh information has appeared regarding the upcoming NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4080. And with a TGP of 420 watts, this could be frankly very worrying news. This is the first time that information has specifically leaked for the 4080, with most sources to date largely citing circa 600 plus watts as a possibility for the RTX 4090. With Copite 7 Kimi citing a 420 watt 480 TGP with 99% certainty however, this is one of the strongest indications yet that next generation GPUs are going to require significantly more power. And just to put this into context, the current Nvidia 3080 has a TGP of 350 watts. So if this information is accurate, its next gen equivalent will see this figure go up by 70 watts. No, not a huge amount, but enough to give us a pretty firm indication that this can be expected across the board with the 4090 likely representing the biggest jump. Why is all this important though? Well, ultimately it's gonna come down to power supplies. With a TGP of 420 watt, people looking to buy a 4080 with something like a 650 watt or even a 750 watt PSU might find themselves cutting things mightily thin when it comes to components. No, TGP is not representative of the amount of power the graphics card draws. It's kind of a bit more complicated than that. But in simple terms, it's the, let's say, hypothetical maximum. Now, I've been a strong advocate through the current generation of GPUs being on the market that if you're looking at an RTX 3080 and that kind of level performance, then a decent 750 watt gold rated PSU should treat you absolutely fine. And for the most part, there are you know, tons of people out there who have done exactly that and their systems are running like a dream. And I'm guessing that more than likely they bought their shiny new PSU in the hope of not only supporting their current GPU that they're rocking, but also potentially giving them enough headroom for the next generation. And that, well, that's where things turn a bit sour if this 99% accurate news is anything to go by. I guess you could argue that those who went a little safer and you know plumped for a 850 watt or above shouldn't I guess need to worry as much but with PCI Express Gen 5 being a thing we are going to see a change in the connector that we've all seen not only rumored but also appearing on a few models of power supplies that are already released within the channel. The good news, however, is that even if new GPUs adopt this connector, just like with the FE models and some AIB SKUs of the 30 series did, they will come with an adapter. So I guess you're not completely left high and dry. To add some more confirmation into this supposed power draw, because we still have to remember that until we see something concrete from Nvidia or one of their AIBs, or by actually having the card in our hands to do our own testing, it's still just a rumor. But lately we've seen power supply manufacturers releasing higher wattage units. I mean, just last week, Thermaltake unveiled their GF3 Gold ATX 3.0 PSUs with that all important included PCIe Gen 5 16 pin connector. But that wasn't the most interesting thing. The most interesting thing is that their lowest wattage came in at 750 watts. I mean, if this was a year ago, we likely would have seen a 650 watt as the lowest or even a 550 watt model in that range. 
Now though, the range also goes up to 1650 watts, which historically were normally reserved for the likes of EVGA, Superflower, and Corsair's top tier AXI units, which all typically came with platinum or above ratings. But now it all just seems to be, I don't know, a little more, let's call it mainstream. I mean, a 1650 watt gold rated PSU. What is this madness? Well, from the looks of it, it's a sign of things to come. But this is where the bad news comes in. We all know that the cost of living has gone up and predominantly we've seen utilities like electricity and of course gas being a very big factor. And if next generation GPUs are going to use more power, what does this actually mean for the average user? Well, here we go. With a bit of uh, quick maths and looking at the average cost per kilowatt hour of 27 pence in the UK at the moment and imagining for the sake of this kind of weird maths equation that I'm trying to put forward that you max your GPU out for 24 hours a day, the RTX 4080 compared to the 3080 would cost you an extra £165 per year. Damn. Now, before you all go raging in the comments that no one's going to run their GPU at 100% 24 hours a day for a full year, I get that. But it still opens up kind of a good talking point and acts as a good basis for comparison and makes it easy to say that maybe over the course of a year your GPU is at max load for, I don't know, like 10% of the year. So if we look at that, which I think is a fair assumption as people are gaming now more than ever and for longer periods, then by my funky maths equation, that would still work out an extra 16 pounds over the year. And with electricity cost due to go up even more in October in the UK, that number is still what I'd kind of class as conservative. But what about other countries, I hear you say? I mean, for the most part, it is the same principle. With everything going on in the world, prices are rising everywhere. So you can use the same calculations of multiplying the extra 70 watts by your kilowatt hour rate, multiplying that by 24 hours for the day or however many hours you play per day, at max load I might add, so it's a bit clunky, and then multiplying that by the year or however many days, it kind of gives you a rough idea. So the reasoning behind this video, I think it's know, an interesting one that the main chatter surrounding the 40 series cards comes down to power and not performance. But maybe that's because we've not seen any rumors of you know, concrete information on performance. I guess what I'm trying to say is this is the only open discussion we can have right now. So let's get one going, whether it be in the comments section below or over on Discord, link is down below in the description. If you're rocking a 30 series card, will you be buying the equivalent 40 series, 3070, 4070, 3080, 4080. And even then, will you be happy about the extra ongoing cost it may have due to the extra power draw? I don't know, it's an issue I've, I've been talking personally about for a little while and something we tend to see with every generation. Nvidia, AMD, Intel, whoever it is, they tend to make a new product and they tend to make it more efficient. And then instead of focusing on that due to kind of the competition from the rest of them, from their brand rivals, they lose every ounce of efficiency by making the product more powerful. I don't know, is, is this the right way of doing it or would you like to see something change? I think overall though, this is once again, a pretty firm indication that for next generation graphics cards and especially so high end models, many perfectly adequate PSUs today might not be potent enough to cut the mustard tomorrow. And with that, hopefully you enjoyed this video and hopefully it gave you some form of insight as to potentially what's about to come. And if you did like this video, a sub and a like to the channel would be amazing. And I'll see you in the next one. See you later guys. Bye bye.